This is KDKA of the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company in East Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We shall now broadcast the election returns. <clears throat> The 1920s. Historians look back on this decade as an era of change, technology and the rise of big business. Or maybe the beginning of modern entertainment might be seen as the standout change of this era. However, one of the most important topics to cover in the 1920s are the several political and social tensions that came about. Tensions involving communism, immigration, and the separation between church and state. But first, we should look back to the year of 1886 and the beginnings of anarchy in the United States. Anarchism is the anti-authoritarian political philosophy that advocates for the violent overthrow of government. Tensions about labor conditions came to a head in the Hay Market Square riot. More radical supporters came out to voice their opinions on the awful working conditions of the time. They demanded better conditions and hours. After police killed eight workers in a standoff in Chicago, a riot broke out in the Haymarket Square. As police moved in to stop the rally, a bomb went off. In the following violence, seven police were killed. Many saw these rioters as dangerous. Many of the people in the riots were immigrants. After this event, the authorities focused more on radical and anarchist groups, sowing the seeds for what might happen in the future. Nothing can scare a pure red, white, and blue-blooded American in the 20th century quite like the hammer and sickle, a sign that to the American people threaten all that they hold dear, communism. Communism is the political idea of a classless society where all business and property is controlled by the government. The fear of a communist uprising in the United States was called the Red Scare. The name comes from a term reds, a word used to describe communists. In the 1900s, there were two Red Scares, one in the late 40s and early 50s, and the one we're focusing on, the one in the early 20s. After the Bolshevik Revolution, fears of a communist uprising inside the United States became a real threat. The average American took great pride in what they owned. Communism threatened to take it away. Adding on to the fear was the Haymarket Square riots, as joining a strike was considered communist. Sacco and Vanzetti were two Italian-born immigrants who moved to the United States until their execution on August 23, 1927. On April 15, 1920, Sacco and Vanzetti robbed and killed a factory paymaster and his guard at the Slater and Morrill Shoe Company in Braintee, Massachusetts. Both stated that they had not committed the crime, despite both being anarchists. Despite their pleas, they were both sentenced to death in the electric chair. The debate on whether or not they actually committed the crime is still a hotly contested point of discussion. As these two supposedly violent and evil people were immigrants, public opinion of immigration fell as people believed that immigrants took jobs rightfully belonging to Americans. Others feared political radicalists such as communists and anarchists were moving into the country. This again added to the fear from the Haymarket riots. Nativism ran wild as people began to show a clear preference to people from their own country. In response, the government passed several laws making immigration into the United States more difficult. These laws had lots of nativism, discriminating against people from Europe. Before his death, Benzetti said this, If it had not been for these things, I might have lived out my life talking at street corners to scorning men. I might have died unmarked, unknown, a failure. Now we are not a failure. This is our career and our triumph. To add to the already frightening Red Scare, on June 2, 1919, eight bombs went off in eastern cities at the exact same time, one of them targeting Attorney General Palmer. With this incident increasing fear in the country of a total communist takeover, the U.S. Justice Department launched the Palmer Raids. The Palmer Raids were raids carried out with the goal to deport or arrest any communist or anarchists seen as a threat to the country. Overall, the raids were very violent, and many people not even involved with communism were arrested. They were arrested without warrants, some of them Americans themselves. The backlash was great, and it was seen as a civil rights violation. In the end, over 500 foreigners were deported. Due to rising tensions, sedition laws were passed, laws limiting free speech criticizing the government, such as anarchy. In the year 1859, Charles Darwin published his book On the Origin of Species. At the time, it was considered extremely controversial, as it gave a theory different to the widely accepted story of creation told in the Bible. So controversial, in fact, that it led to the passing of the Butler Act in Tennessee in the year of 1925. The law stated that no public school teachers can teach the theory of evolution in place of the story of creation in the Bible. The Civil Liberties Union saw this as a violation of the Constitution. To see if the law held up in court, they looked for teachers that violated the law, one of them being John Scopes. 
Scopes agreed to be put on trial to test the Butler Act. It was brought to court and both sides had notable members argue their case. The prosecution had three-time presidential candidate William Jennings Bryan, and the defense had distinguished lawyer Clarence Darrow. The trial lasted eight days. The defense stated that the law was unconstitutional, while the prosecution believed that teaching children that they are no different than monkeys was a bad thing to put in children's heads. The two argued about not only the Butler Act, but about religion in general. The trial even got to the point where Darrow put Brian on the witness stand. The trial gained a ton of media attention, with many newspaper and journalists writing about it. It was the first trial to have live coverage over radio. At the end of the eight days, John Scopes was found guilty of violating the Butler Act. Ramifications of the trial spread far and wide. Firstly, many biology textbooks removed all mention of evolution. It also made light of the ever-growing Christian fundamentalist movement and the changing culture of America at the time. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution states that there shall be no law respecting the establishment of religion. This is known as the Establishment Clause. After the legendary Scopes trial in 1925, the Lemon Test was put into place in the year 1971. The Lemon Test comes from the Lemon v. Kurtzman court case. The Lemon Test is used to see if a law breaks the Establishment Clause with three questions. Government action violates the Establishment Clause unless it 1. has a significant secular purpose, 2. does not have the primary effect of advancing or inhibiting religion, and 3. does not foster excessive entanglement between government and religion. Having obvious ties to the Scopes trial, the Lemon Test makes sure that there is no religion in the law. As you can see, the 1920s brought a lot along of change. Changes and events that happened in the 1920s would go on to shape the United States for the rest of the 20th century.